Hello there, my fellow packmates, and welcome back to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapters lore. In today's homebrew, we're gonna tell a story about one of the rare successors of the Space Wolves. I'm not entirely certain, as we did cover a lot of homebrews already, but these guys might actually be the first homebrew wolf successors we've covered on the channel. It is also not exactly a story centered around one chapter, but multiple ones working together. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Dusk Howlers, also known as the Volka Hrimherjar, I probably butchered that, but translated as the Wolves of Hrimgard, are a fully Primaris Ultima founding successor chapter created out of the lineage of Lehman Russ. With Robert Gilliman installed as the Lord Commander of the Imperium, the resurrected Primarch would waste no time in enacting a plan to take the fight to chaos. Gilliman called for action, and ordered the mustering of a mighty armada. With elements of the Adeptus Custodes, the Silent Sisterhood, as well as many other chapters of Astartes, and newly created Astartes from the Ultima founding, Gilliman launched his Indomitus Crusade. And one of these newly formed Primaris chapters was called the Dusk Howlers, proud inheritors of the legacy of the feral and mighty Lehman Russ. Their first chapter master was the great wolf Bjorn Grimjack Ragnarsson. Once they were deployed, the new chapters made their way towards their designated sectors and immediately took the fight to the enemy. Following victories in the Keriolis system, the Dusk Howlers wanted to consolidate their gain and establish their fortress monastery on the newly discovered world of Hrimgard, a planet of ice and fire. In fact, Hrimgard was a planet comparable to the homeworld of their genetic forebears, mirroring the Space Wolves' own world of Fenris. Located on the outskirts of the galactic west of the Segmentum Pacificus, Hrimgard is also dominated by extremes of climate. The extreme geography of the planet has resulted in the human population of this world becoming one composed largely of primitive, nomadic, and pre-industrial barbarian tribes. These tribes constantly fought to secure territory, and as a result skirmishes and feuds over land between rival tribes were common. The people of Hrimgard were hardened to the changes in temperature and the environmental extremes, and so was the fauna. Claiming the untamed world as their own, with the help of the Adeptus Mechanicus, the Dusk Howler's Iron Priests oversaw the construction of their mighty fortress monastery of Utgardar, or the Wolf's Hold, built in the tallest peak of the mountains of Helmgard. The chapter had been granted all they needed to establish themselves as a fully functioning space marine chapter including newly forged ships for the foundation of their chapter fleet, as well as new armories and several Space Wolves priests. The Dusk Howlers also had the Adeptus Mechanicus import all kind of Fenrisian fauna to their new chapter planet. Once the Dusk Howlers had firmly established a working foundation for their chapter, and a fully functioning base of operations, they began sending individual great companies, or smaller task forces, on multiple campaigns to assist several besieged Imperial systems. Although the Dusk Cowlers had achieved many notable victories and triumphs, these achievements were but a sliver of light piercing the vast darkness that now covers the known galaxy. But despite the odds being stacked against them, the chapter continues to bring sword and flame to the enemies of humanity, endeavoring to live up to the legacy of their genetic forebears as true scions of Rus. As the Dusk Howlers prosecuted their campaigns during the Indomitus Crusade, they encountered another cousin chapter created from the lineage of Rus. They were known as the Crimson Prowlers. This Ultima founding chapter had eschewed the establishment of a chapter homeworld, preferring to take the fight directly to the enemies of mankind, aboard the vessels of their mighty warfleet. The two chapters immediately formed a bond of kinship, as they found each other quite like-minded. For decades these two chapters would fight alongside each other during many campaigns, taking back worlds lost to the traitor legions or enslaved by the Neverborn. Forming an alliance with several night houses and Imperial Guard regiments, this coalition led the crusade across several neighboring systems in the Segmentum Obscurus. 
During that time, the two chapters encountered yet a third chapter, also descended from the Space Wolves. And these were known as the Blooded Hunters. Of course, they were also an Ultima founding chapter, hailing from the feral and inhospitable world of Muspelheimer, located in the isolated Helheim system. After the destruction of Katia in the 13th Black Crusade, the warp storms that emanated from the formation of the Great Rift darkened the entire system. And in the ensuing maelstrom, a large coordinate warband, comprised of several infamous Chaos warbands like the Battleforged, the Bloodborne Wolves and the Shackles of Corn, materialized in the system to slaughter and enslave the world's populations. Despite their odds arrayed against them, the Bloodied Hunters stood steadfast, ready to sell their lives dearly for the sake of their people. The ferocious Astartes were heavily engaged with the bloody-handed berserkers and their demonic allies. Although they fought bravely and made the forces of chaos account for every inch of the system they took, it was a losing battle. They fell back to their homeworld and prepared to make a final stand, determined to acquit themselves as true sons of Rus. Fortunately for them, smashing through the ranks of the coordinate war host, the Sons of Rus and their Imperial allies fought their way towards the ninth planet of the system, to relieve their beleaguered cousins. Only with the timely arrival of the Dusk Howlers and the Crimson Prowlers was the butchery stopped. The Wolf Brethren fought with the same ferocity and passion as any son of Fenris, driving the Berserkers on their heels. Soon, the tide of battle would turn as several Imperial Knights and Imperial Guard units added their might to the Sons of Rus. Grudgingly, the majority of the Coordinate Warriors withdrew from the planet, although some of them still refused to retreat, instead being slaughtered by the fury-driven Sons of Rus. In the aftermath of that victory, the Great Hunter Asbjorn Kveld Ulfer, or the Night Wolf, the Lord of the Bloodied Hunters, extended an invitation to the other chapter masters of the Crimson Prowlers and the Dusk Howlers. The two great wolves, escorted by a large element of their chapter's best warriors, met in the great feast hall of the Bloodied Hunter's Fortress Monastery. And when they arrived at their destination, much to their astonishment, they found that their cousin chapter's formidable fortress was actually a half-buried ancient space wolf strike cruiser. After a lot of feasting and drinking, the three chapter masters came to an accord. They agreed to form the Sons of Rus, an unofficial collective of Space Wolf successor chapters that would stand sentinel over the Eye of Terror. Each of the chapters would henceforth come to the other's aid when required, without any hesitation. The coalition thus formed continued waging their wars against the great enemy and their never-born allies to free all beleaguered Imperial worlds they could find. They worked their way sector by sector, planet by planet, freeing those that could be freed and avenging those that could not. Almost a century of fighting culminated in the epic Battle of Raukos, a major engagement between the forces of Gilliman and the forces of Chaos at the strategically important Pit of Raukos, an ancient and isolated warp rift. Already reeling from Gilliman's campaigns, the forces of Chaos were dealt a decisive killing blow and were decimated by the Imperial forces. In the aftermath of that victory, Gilliman decided to disperse the Indomitus Crusade by holding a triumph much like that of the Emperor which was held at Ulanor, in the final days of the Great Crusade. It was at this time that the majority of the remaining legions of the Unnumbered Sons were disbanded, and dispersed to already established Space Marine chapters, while the leftovers were created into another wave of brand new chapters of Primaris. One such chapter was the Dawn's Wolves, yet another successor chapter from the lineage of Lehman Rus. Over the course of the Indomitus Crusade, these particular sons of Rus would prove themselves to be very competent in guerrilla tactics, as well as being consummate hunters pursuing their foes relentlessly and tearing them apart in close quarters. Following their inception, the chapter decided to stay as a fleet-based chapter. They set course for the Eye of Terror, and they carved a bloody path as they slew the enemies of humanity in righteous anger, purging pirates, cultists, and all kinds of Xenos. 
Only when they met with the ferocious blooded hunters and the crimson prowlers did their first hunt end. The crimson prowlers had already fought alongside the as yet unnamed dawn wolves when they were still part of the legions of the unnumbered sons, on many occasions during the early years of the Indomitus Crusade. The discovery of these free Space Marine chapters, who were also successors of the Space Wolves, and also were never part of the Unnumbered Sons, was a time of trial for Dawn's Wolves. Their brothers were at first dismissive of what they perceived as congenial restraint from the younger chapter. Only when a Chaos Fleet came out of the Eye of Terror, and the Dawn's Wolves immediately rushed to confront the head of their cousins, did the other chapters change their opinion of them. Spearheading the assault upon the vile forces of the arch enemy, the Dawn's Wolves were quickly joined by their fellow wolf brothers. Once their foes had been crushed, each chapter making up for the blind spots in the other's favorite tactics, the Blooded Hunters, the Dusk Howlers, and the Crimson Prowlers extended an offer to the fourth chapter to join their collective known as the Sons of Rus. The Dawn's Wolves eagerly accepted the invitation and the next years were spent refining this alliance and learning how to best combine the tactics favored by all the chapters in a well-oiled machine. Ever since this auspicious occasion, the Sons of Rus have continued to protect the realms of humanity from the forces of the ruinous powers, carving their own legends in the annals of Imperial history. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Dusk Howlers chapter as well as their three cousin chapters, the Blooded Hunters, the Crimson Prowlers, and the Dawn's Wolves, for today. Not a whole lot of story, I know, but keep in mind most of these homebrews I've been covering lately have actually a lot more lore than I can put in just one video. It is my hope that eventually we'll return to some of these and learn more things about them. Things like chapter culture, doctrine, specialists, and more. At the end of the day though, it does feel good to hear a Space Marine success story. Did you know about these fellows? Do share your thoughts on them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the episode, please consider clicking like, share and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and the Emperor protects.